my Electrolux 350 electronic purchased according to the instruction book in 1984 from Jessops in Nottingham is refurbished. Yes, I've had it through the works. It is done. Seems to work well. Haven't used it. Got to do some bits in this video. And yeah, it's ready to show you what it looks like now. Yes, hello, my vacuum Kalina chums, how are you today? Yes, this old girl has come up pretty well, to be honest, it is quite faded, which is a bit of a shame, but equally, you can't truly tell unless you remove this sticker. So, we might get away with just pretending that it is cream rather than the white that it should be underneath. But it is no less detracting from the fact that this is a lovely thing indeed. Inside of here is spotless, completely clean and empty. The slider control works, the buttons push. There is literally not a speck of dirt anywhere in this machine. That's because, as you can tell, I haven't put the filters in yet. There is no filter here or there. So we best start off with that first. And I raided the spares and I found a non-genuine set of filters. But it's the only packet I've got that has the post-motor, pre-motor filter in it. I do have a genuine post-motor filter, but eh, there's no point really at all oh my goodness ah there we go the side broke yeah there's no point in fitting just that because we need the other bit as well so we have only one of those what do we have in here we have one of those and three exhaust filters marvelous they're all different thicknesses that one looks the middlest so there we go i now have an abundance of these post motor filters um, no pre ones. I mean, I could have cut one, but hey, we have one there. Yeah, this goes right in here. Oh, yeah, you can see right in there. You've got to tuck it all the way in, and I'm going to try and do it without getting my head in the way so you can't see. Oh, my goodness. Fiddly, fiddly, fiddly. But once it's in, holy moly, that was tricky. Once it's in, it's like a wall, a complete wall of filter which works very well indeed. Then we have the post-motor exhaust filter, which and I'm quite pleased to see that the non-genuine filters have this. I was a little bit worried about that. Well, I'm not worried because it's easy enough just to go poop and poke it in. But yes, it has the cutouts already, although this one's bigger. And isn't, go there we go, isn't going over this one. Little. Yeah, that literally just sits like that on there. And that goes in there like that. How marvellous is that? You already know that we have a nice supply of HEPA flow bags from the Electrolux Z2060 video and the Electrolux Z2000 one as well. So that's excellent. We should be able to just slide this in and that is done. The machine, I can now put this on. You can put it on by pushing this up with a screwdriver. I would just take it off though, it's easy. But hey, with the bag fitted, we are ready to go. The cable rewind has some sort of windmill attached to it. It has a balancer paddle thing, which is very nice. The cable is all clean and tidy and has such a smooth rewind because of that balance paddle, which is absolutely amazing. <laughs> Smoothest cord reel I've had for a while. The Electrolux are notorious for pretty mediocre cable reels. They never quite got it right. But hey, that works well. You on? No, you're not. So, ha! I put the slide control in back to front. But that's maximum. And super boost. Oh. Wow, that 
have some power. Right, so I've put, I've checked my picture as well, I've put the speed control module basically the wrong way round. Oh. And actually that's not going to be such a pain to change, I'm not going to yet, but these have a notorious pair of screws under here and they're these screws look these weird things here which i barely got off with a pair of thin pliers just to push on the edges and then they went eventually they're just nice coarse screws yeah they sit under this metal plate and in there now is actually a pair of torque screws from a shark of all things oh we've tainted it it's also still got its suppressor in because I did message Mr. The Vintage Appliance Emporium and he's selfishly on a plane and can't really message me at the minute, although knows what he needs to tell me. But yeah, there's three wires basically going to the suppressor and then the suppressor only goes to one side of the coil. The other side of the coil goes directly to the super boost switch. And I just cannot quite work out what to do with it. The suppressor is starting to crack a little bit, so who knows, it might go kabang in this video. Though it hasn't lived in a shed its whole life, so might be okay so there is the machine as you know i have the destruction manual with it and we note we have some tools there well we had some tools with this vacuum cleaner and we still have some now oh come back into shop here we have our crevice tool very nice indeed we have our pretty immaculate dusting brush that is ever so clean and then we have our hose, and I took the ends of this off, you slide the handle grip down, popping it off of here. Then there's a retaining ring that you pop down, and then the hose comes off of this bit. All this bit unclips, there's a little retaining dimple in the middle down there. You pop that out, that slides off, and the whole thing came up absolutely beautiful with a trip through the washing machine. This didn't have a rubber end on it and I haven't re-watched my before video to remember if it's because it was rubbish in the first place or more likely because I borrowed it for something else so it, it now has a nice black one on it and it can stay on it because you know it's done now can't go rubbing parts from done machines oh. powerful and there's only really about three rubber seals there's the fan case of the body and the motor sits at the back and then there's a rubber seal in there actually which connects to the bag and literally that's it so just cleaning those two has transformed it immensely now we got the thing with some random khaki old tools on it now the instruction manual shows this very nice floor head but if i position this here then I can use this space here to show you the back page of the service manual, which shows a different set of tools. I have, and I've got a few of these, so it might be able to keep it, but it should have come with one of these single-piece ones anyway. Then, I mean, this one's probably an upgrade because it's my metal base plate one, but the service manual shows it coming with one of these hateful, horrible heads. And, hey, one of those hateful, horrible heads is what we're going to use now. Look, we can clip the butterfly dusting tool there. We can yeet the crevice tool out of the way because electrons never cared about where you put that. And, yeah, do some vacuuming, 1983 style. It pulls around ever so nicely. There's a small tool corridor. Full power. Mm. We 
really quite fun stuff, but, and I'm sure we'll all agree, this floor head is not nice. And um, was probably a main reason why people remember vacuum cleaners with this floor head being particularly rubbish. What if we changed it up a little bit? We could make this machine feel really nice by fitting a Mila hose, hose wand and floor tool to it. And you actually do that by sticking, I found, look, the official, original, not the original, but the one it came with, single extension tube and yeah it slots all the way down there and tightens up quite nicely so oh yes cleans everywhere nicely under the air oh yes could take the 32mm tube and fit it to a turbo head. Very mediocre. could keep the vacuum cleaner in now and fit a modern style floor tool like this Vitronics plastic base plated thing. Nice power. Oh, very nice. A bit scrapey, but very nice. Oh, of course. Uh, Ooh. 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 That's almost hard to push. Or of course, you could go old school with something like this Electrolux Dolphin style floor tool. Certainly the floor tool that was used on probably the generation starting after this. Oh, very nice. Glides. Metal base plate. Doesn't stick to the floor. Whichever floor head you decide to use on your Electrolux 350, whether it's a 350 without the electronic and with this floor head, or if it's the electronic that I have with its floor head. But if you don't have that, hey, all of these work tremendously well with this. Very nice machine. You may have noticed since the last bit of filming that Ooh, we lost the sticker. Yeah, it didn't stick on properly, so I took it back off. It is in with the instruction manual now, and hopefully that will just fade over time and match the rest of this faded yellow beauty. But being faded and yellow does not stop it being a very nice cleaner indeed. So, comment down below. Do you have a 350 or a 350 electronic? If so, what do you think of it? Do you have its original floor tool? Is its original floor tool nicer than, say, a Miele one? It's probably a lot nicer than this. 
Probably not nicer than this as well. Comment down below what's it like to use with its original floor head. And until next time, I and another Electrolux of some description will probably see you soon. Bye bye.